Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We must not forget that. Praise God. We must learn to praise God. Praise. Sometimes, you know, some of us, the only time we praise God is when we are in church. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we don't see a lot of victory in our life. Praise God. Amen. We don't see a lot of victory in our life because the only time we praise God is here. We don't praise Him at home. Or the only time we praise God is when something good is happening in our life. Hallelujah. And so we don't see victory. But the true victory that we can experience is when we learn to praise God in the prison. When we learn to praise God in the fire. When we learn to praise God in the storm. And that is, and you have to choose to praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. I will praise you, O God. And when you start praising, it's amazing. When you start praising, even though your circumstance might be causing you to be sorrowful, depressed, sad. I guarantee you, just lift up your hand and start praising God. Suddenly, the joy of the Lord will start to engulf you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord will start to engulf you. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is why, praise God, we can rejoice in any circumstance. The will of God is for us, as the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 5. The will of God is for you to rejoice in all things. Amen? Rejoice in all things. Everybody say, praise is my weapon. I will praise him. I will praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise him. And he will give you the victory. Praise him and he will visit you. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let us pray for the word of the Lord and we will go to the word of God for today. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We magnify your name for this hour you've given us, for this time you've given us. We ask you, Lord, to speak to us today. Teach us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. May God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Amen. You are there, say amen. It says, But we are bound to give thanks to you, to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth to which called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord from the beginning chose you and me. 
Amen. Hallelujah. For salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. And he called us by the gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have been called through the gospel to obtain the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to learn what that means today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. First of all, I would like to state that we must be thankful that God counted us worthy. Amen? And chose us from the beginning for salvation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. From the beginning of creation. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he called us through the gospel to obtain something. Amen. And that is the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, let's define the gospel. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. The gospel has three components. One, the identity of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Who Jesus Christ is. Two, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then three, the mandate of the gospel. And that is in response to what Jesus Christ has done. We have to repent. We have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. If we look at Luke 24, Luke 24, praise God, verse 46, then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer, to rise from the dead the third day, and then repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Hallelujah. And then in Acts chapter 2, the 12 disciples preached the good news of salvation. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Acts 2, verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, What shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you, to your children, to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. This is how God calls us through the gospel. Hallelujah. When God tells us, 
to repent, be baptized in Jesus' name when the gospel is preached to us. When we respond in obedience, we are answering the call of God. Praise God. So through here, through the gospel, we have been told in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, that through the gospel we are called to obtain the glory of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. The glory of Jesus Christ is not remission of sins. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remission of sins signifies what is taken. Praise God. When we respond to the gospel and we are baptized, our sins is remitted. Hallelujah. Without baptism in Jesus' name, there is no remission. Hallelujah. Paul, Peter is very, very, very careful when, when he preached the gospel. He said, repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. For, for what? Remission of sins. For our sins to be remitted, that means forgiven, we have to be baptized in Jesus' name. That is where our forgiveness is applied. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so if anyone has not been baptized in Jesus' name, his sins has not been remitted. If anyone tells you otherwise, they are deceiving you. Very simple. Hallelujah. Now, on the other hand, praise God. What is the glory of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ suffered, died, and rose from the grave. As we read, that repent, repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name, right? In his name. But that's not the only reason why he suffered died and rose from the grave. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Before we look at what the other thing that Jesus Christ suffered, died, and rose again was, let's first of all Remind ourselves who Christ is. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And the Son of God is the Word of God. The Word that became flesh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the beginning, in John chapter 1, verse 1, hallelujah. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. Praise God. In the beginning was the Word. Amen. Let's look at that first. In the beginning was the Word. Praise God. If you go back to Genesis, John here is alluding to the beginning. In Genesis, praise God. The Word was all that there is. Praise God. Amen. Before any created thing, the Word was
The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And then if you continue on, before any created thing, the Bible says, God said, let the firmament be separated, praise God. And it was so. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. We understand what that means. Amen? The word was with God means that the word was in God. Amen? Where did the word come out from? It came out from within God. God said, let there be light and there was light. Praise God. Amen? In fact, when we go and read Isaiah, praise God. 55 verse 10 to 11. Isaiah 55 verse 10 to 11. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven do not return there, but water the earth, makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and the bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Praise God. The word that goes forth from my mouth. Praise God. Amen. God's word emanates from him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. It means the word was in God. Praise God. The word comes from God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the word was God. Hallelujah. The word was the definition of God. The word was God's existence. That's how he existed. That's his nature. That's who he is. Praise God. Amen. A simple way to make you see this is if I take you back to Genesis before God created everything. And I say to you, imagine you were there. Amen. Before light was created. Before the earth was formed. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. That. Um, let me read it first. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. So imagine you were there in Genesis chapter 1. Hallelujah. Would you be able to see anything? No. Amen. Would you be able to feel something? Yes. You would feel the spirit of God hovering. Hovering means moving. You would feel the spirit of God moving. And then you would hear a voice. You will hear a word. Let there be light. And then boom. Light comes. Praise God. And then after a little while. You will hear another voice. Praise God. Another word. Praise God. Amen. Let the waters. Under the heavens be gathered together. Into one place. Let the dry land appear. And then it was so. So if I tell you, describe to me the creator, how would you describe him? Word. In the beginning was the word. Word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Word. So the Bible tells us God is the word. The creator, deity is the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And in John chapter 4, verse 24, the Bible tells us God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God's nature, God's, God exists in spirit and in word. Praise God. His word and spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. That's who he is. Hallelujah. His word Is by which he does everything. He reveals himself, he reveals himself by his word. 
This is what? His word, praise God. Amen? Hallelujah. He creates by his word. He heals by his word. Everything he does is by his, his what? His word. And in fact, his image, we can say, in the Old Testament was his word. You know, when God told the people of Israel with Moses to come to the mountain, that they could hear his voice, they could hear his words. Moses told the people, reminded them, and we read that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, that on that day, when finally God was revealing himself to his people, hallelujah, He revealed himself through his word, through his voice. Praise God. And it says in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 11. Then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the midst of heaven with darkness and cloud and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. So when they came to the mountain and God revealed himself, he only revealed himself by his words. They didn't see any form. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so as a result of that, in verse 15, Moses commands them to be careful. Take careful heed to yourself, for you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you out of Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly. Make for yourself a carved image in the form of any figure. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen? What was God's form to them? The word. That's it. So they couldn't make any kind of form in any figure. Hallelujah. God's form to them was the word. That's the only way they could envision and describe God. Hallelujah. Amen? And so John is telling us that. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. The one true living God. The indivisible God. Amen. Amen. His image, his essence was the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Why is this important? Hallelujah. Because when we go to John chapter 1 and we continue reading from verse Let's go to, we we'll read verse 6. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. The world did not know him. He came to his own. His own did not receive him. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God. Those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word. Okay, by which God existed, by which God revealed himself, by which God creates, praise God. Hallelujah. God's essence, God's nature. It became flesh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. That flesh, that physical form, praise God, through which God, the invisible God, was revealed. 
Amen? It's called the Son of God. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's called what? The Son of God. The Son of God is the physical form of the Father, the physical body by which he was manifested. Manifest means revealed. Amen? Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 3.16. Let's go there. 1 Timothy 3.16. Praise the Lord Jesus. 1 Timothy 3.16 Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, sinned by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God, the invisible God, hallelujah, the eternal spirit, praise God, the Father, was manifested Revealed in the flesh. That is why Jesus is called Emmanuel, God with us. Praise God. Now, the Son of God is that flesh, that physical body, that physical form. Praise God. And that was the Word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And John tells us, we beheld His glory. Praise God. So, the Son of God, okay, Okay, and I hope I can articulate this clearly so you can really grasp it. Amen. Hallelujah. God's word, okay, the word, is all that God is. Praise God. His glory, his power, his wisdom. Everything about him, praise God, hallelujah, is in his word, praise God. Now that word has become flesh, praise God. And so in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, praise God. Hebrews chapter 1. Amen. From verse 1. Amen. God who at various times in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in this last day spoken to us by his son. Amen? By his, his physical body, his flesh, whom he appointed heirs of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. His son is what? His word. Everything was created by his word. Praise God. And then he says in verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Oh, hallelujah. His power. He, it is the, the sun is the brightness of his glory. Hallelujah. In other words, it's the exact representation of his glory. Of his image. Hallelujah. Praise God. Perfect reflection of God. In terms of his wisdom, his power. Everything. Praise God. In fact, the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2, chapter 1, sorry, it pleased the Father that all the fullness should dwell in Him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Amen. There's nothing that can be compared to the Son. Hallelujah. And so that is why when one sees the son, he's seeing who? The father. The Bible tells us that Christ is the image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. What is amazing is, hallelujah, in the Old Testament, it was prophesied 
Praise God. Hallelujah. That God will reveal his image, his glory to all humanity. Praise God. Amen. In fact, in Isaiah 40, hallelujah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse uh, 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice of the one crying in the wilderness and we know this voice to be the voice of John the Baptist preparing the way before the Lord before, before God, praise God. And he was preparing the way so that the glory of the Lord should be revealed. Who is the glory of the Lord? Jesus, the son of? Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of? The son is the perfect, the, 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 per, um, the exact representation of his Persons, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the brightness of God's glory. The bright, you know what the brightness means? God. Hallelujah. Brightness represents the highest. The brightest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen? The Son represents the highest form of His glory. Everything that God creates, everything that God forms, has an essence of His glory, essence of His image. But the Son is the exact representation of His person, of His image, and it's the brightness of His glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he has appointed him to be heirs of all things. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, John the Baptist and the disciples were privileged to see God's perfect image. God's the brightest of God's glory walking and living among them. Because before, in time past, many prophets desired to see the glory. Even Moses, Moses asked God, God, show me your glory. God says, no one will, be, no one will see my face, hallelujah, and live Moses was asking for God's glory, but God responded, no one shall see my face because God's image is his glory. And live. Hallelujah. I'm just going to show you my back. He's not talking literally, metaphorically. That is, I'm going to show you just a shadow of my glory because that's what you are able to handle. Hallelujah. And the time has not yet come, praise God, for my glory to be revealed. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so when the time came in the fullness of time, praise God. The Son of God was manifested, the Bible tells us. Amen. And so when the time came, God was manifested in the flesh. Hallelujah. His image was revealed. His glory, the exact brightness of his glory was revealed. 
And so Jesus said to the disciples, Hallelujah. Praise God. In Matthew 13, verse 17, told them, um, Matthew 13, verse 16, read, put it verse 16, I think. It says, Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Verse 17. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and do not see it. And to hear what you hear and do not hear it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus wasn't talking about the miracles he was doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. He was talking about himself. Hallelujah. Do you know how many prophets desired to be sitting down with the image of God? Hallelujah. And to see what you sing, to handle what you're handling, to hear. Amen. And so go to 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. You know, the the, the hallelujah. Amen. In fact, before I go there, before I go there, before we go there, let's go to John chapter 14, verse 8. Hallelujah. Uh, go to verse 7. Verse 7. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Hallelujah. And then Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and it's sufficient for us. Hallelujah. Philip didn't realize what he was saying. He didn't grasp it. Hallelujah. But he knew about the desires of the prophets and the fathers to see the Father, to see God. Praise God. That was their desire. Amen. Hallelujah. That was their desire is to see God face to face. In fact, there is a scripture in the book of Psalms 42. You know, it says, As the deer pants after the water, so my heart pants, so my soul pants after you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When do I enter and see the face of God? That was their desire, is to, to, to be able to stand in God's presence and see his face. See his image, praise God. Hallelujah. See his glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. But they were not able. They were not able. They were prevented. God did not allow them. And so Philip said, Lord, if it is possible, show us the Father and it's sufficient for us. Amen. Because Jesus said, you have known him and have seen him. And then Jesus' response was in the next verse. Brother Lazar, are you paying attention? Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Why? He is the brightness of his glory. He is the exact representation of his image. He is the image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so in 1 John, 1 John chapter 1, amen. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, and then which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled concerning the word of life. You know, John, hallelujah. He realized, hallelujah, what he was handling, what he was touching, what he was hearing, seeing, praise God. It was the word of life that brought everything into existence. Hallelujah. Can you comprehend that? That realization, praise God. The, hallelujah. Right before you, hallelujah, is the one that has created Everything that exists. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But it doesn't end there. Because. 
God didn't reveal his glory. God didn't come in the flesh so that we just, we just could behold him, see him, and touch him. That was not the ultimate purpose of God. Praise God. Amen? Amen? That image, that body, was given up. Amen? For our sins. Amen? Crucified. Died. Hallelujah. With the goal and purpose of us partaking of that divine image. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke in John chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Verse 48. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living, living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. God came, amen, with his flesh, with his body. Praise God. Amen. So that we may live through him. Praise God. Jesus said to Nicodemus, unless one is born of God, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. In John chapter 1, we read, in John chapter 1, <coughs> The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. Through his death and resurrection, God's purpose was for us to be born, amen, of him. Amen. To be born of him, praise God. What does it mean to be born of God? Amen. It's to bear his image. Hallelujah. Praise God. When you have a child, that child bears your image. He has your DNA, praise God. Hallelujah. So, God gave up his son. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that through that sacrifice, he may have many more sons, praise God. So we may become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen? And this is the goal of the gospel. Praise God. Jesus said to Nicodemus, unless a man is born of water and of the spirit, Nicodemus responded and said, how can a man be born again? Does he have to go into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said to him, unless a man is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom 
of God. So in order for us to be born of God, the way to be born of God is to be born of water and of the Spirit. And to be born of water is to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? And to be born of the Spirit is to be baptized in the Spirit. Hallelujah. So, baptism not only takes away, baptism in Jesus' name, not only takes away our sins, but through baptism, hallelujah, we become sons of God. How so? How so? In Galatians 3, verse 20, um, 26, amen, 20, 20, 26, I will read it here, praise God, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, Jesus, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, in the next verse, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So when we are baptized in Jesus' name, what are we being baptized? To whom are we being baptized into? To Christ. Do you understand what that means? It says, that means is this. This is what it means. No, go back, brother. Have put on Christ. The Greek word that's translated put literally means clothed. Clothed on Christ. Christ is the son of God. Christ is the physical form of the Father, praise God. Now, let me just continue reading and then I'm going to make a statement here. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus, praise God. Amen? We are all one in Christ. Because now, our form, praise God, is Christ. Our image is Christ. Amen? But we put on this image in baptism. And this image is what? Is the glory of God. So John, uh, Paul tell, told us that he called you through our gospel to obtain the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we have put on Christ by faith. We have put on the image of God by faith. But there's a time that is going to come. Hallelujah. At the last trumpet, praise God. Hallelujah. That we will put on Christ the image of God literally. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Praise God. First Corinthians 15, and we will read from verse, from verse 44, from verse 44. It is soul a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body, there is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam became a life being giving spirit however the spiritual is not first but the natural and afterward the spiritual the first man was of the earth made of dust the second man is the lord from heaven i want you to stop here the first man adam was of the earth he was made of dust god formed man out of the dust of the ground. The substance of the image of the first man is dust. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. The image that now we bear. Praise God. But the Bible says the second man, that is Christ, is the Lord from heaven. Why is that? Because Christ is the word. Hallelujah. Made flesh or the word that became flesh the substance of Christ is the word of God hallelujah 
The first man is the dust made flesh. The second man, Christ, is the word made flesh. Or the word that became flesh. Continue reading. As was the man of dust, so are also are those who are made of dust. Hallelujah. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. So any man who is made of dust, hallelujah, bears the image of the man of dust, praise God, will he not inherit the kingdom of God. You have to bear the image of the heavenly man, pray, because those who are made of dust belong here. They belong in the dust, praise God. Those who are heavenly belong where? No one can ascend up to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That's what Jesus said. Praise God. Hallelujah. Continue reading. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. That was God's divine goal. That we may bear his image. That is heavenly. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then read the next verse. Now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Hallelujah. The flesh and blood of Adam. The man made of dust cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus said unless you are born again. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You have to be born of the heavenly man. Praise God. You have to bear the image. You have to put on the image of the heavenly man. Praise God. Amen. And how do we bear the image of the heavenly man? For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on. Who is the image of? Hallelujah. But then the day will come. Continue reading. Behold, I tell you, in a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Continue reading. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. The next verse. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in Victory. Hallelujah. And if you go to the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Look. It says this is very powerful. Romans chapter 8 verse 18. Hallelujah. For I consider... That the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. Notice what he says. With no brother. With the glory which shall be revealed in us. The suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. Everybody say with the glory. That shall be revealed in us. There is a glory, glory. That is going to be revealed in us. And what is that glory? For the earnest expectation of the, of, of the creation eagerly waits for the, for the revealing of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? So what, you know, sustains us in times of suffering is the fact that we have been called to obtain this glory. Now, I want you to hopefully grasp, grasp this, okay? You know, when, when we say we have put on Christ, and now we put on him by faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. But on that day, praise God. We'll be changed, praise God. Will put on Christ literally. Okay? 
Do you know what the significance of that is? Christ is the express of God's image. The brightness of his glory. It is that image that you are going to bear. It is that image that you are going to reflect. Hallelujah. Huh? So when God sees you, who does he see? He sees his himself. He sees his image. You are his perfect creation. I will give you an example. In Ephesians chapter, I believe it's chapter 5, Paul talks about the relationship of Christ with his church is, is the same as the relationship between a husband and his wife, praise God. Adam and Eve, he calls it this mystery concerning Christ and his church, right? Amen? The church is his body. Hallelujah. Adam, when God formed Eve, he took his ribs, amen, and then formed Eve from Adam's rib. He took part of himself, of Adam, and made the woman. And so when Adam saw the woman, he differentiated her from all of other God's creation. Amen? Why? Because she had his nature. You are of my bone and of my flesh, praise God. And therefore you shall be called a woman. We, hallelujah, members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, praise God. We are unique above all of God's creation because we bear his nature, his image, hallelujah. When God sees us, he sees his image, he sees himself, praise God. But only that, dominion over all of creation was given to Adam and Eve. Dominion over all creation, over all God has created, is given to us through his son, praise God. This is the glory that we have been called to bear. That even the angels don't have privilege. Hallelujah, Jesus. So Paul, he, when he speaks here, continue. Chapter 8, we were, amen. Praise God. Chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 19. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Amen. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Hallelujah. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. We have been subjected to this prison, to this body, to this corruptible flesh, praise God, in hope. In hope, praise God. What is that hope? That we're going to be delivered from what? From the bondage of corruption. From this corruptible body. To the glorious liberty of children of God. To the liberty of sons of the living God. Being bearing God's image. Continue. For we know that with the whole creation grows and labors with birth pangs together until now. The next verse. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Hallelujah. For we, we were saved in this hope. We were saved. We have been called, hallelujah, to obtain this glory. Hallelujah. This is our hope, hallelujah, that we will obtain this glory. And that is, hallelujah, to be transformed, hallelujah, to the image, hallelujah, of the living God, hallelujah.
But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? The next verse. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. And I want you to put this in King James Version. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. Remind us of our hope. Amen. Remind, we're reminding ourselves of the glory that is to come. Praise God. That we have been called to obtain. Hallelujah. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile body. That he may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In that day, this vile body, praise God. Hallelujah. Will be removed and we will bear the image of the glorious body of Jesus Christ. And so this is why John said in 1 John chapter 3, go to 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, hallelujah. Behold what manner of love the Father, everybody say the Father, hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Do you understand that? Like, what does it mean to be called the sons of God? Now we should understand that. It means to bear the image of God. To bear his nature. Hallelujah. If that doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. I, 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 can you believe that? That's what makes us greater than even the angels. Hallelujah. Praise God. And because we are his sons, let me ask you. A father, would he give his possession to his servant or to his child? The angels are? We are? The, serv the angels are God's possession. We are his children. That's why Paul says, do you not know that we will even judge angels? Right now, praise God, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how to explain. I just don't know. Praise God. That is our hope. All that the Father has is going to be given to us. Because we bear his image. We are his sons. Now continue reading. Look, that's why it tells us what manner of love. I mean, how can you explain that love? Because you know something that is, it's, it's, it's not because, it's not, did not come to us as a result of our works or who we are. Hallelujah. It's purely out of the love of God. It pleased God. That even the angels, they struggle to understand. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Amen. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. Yes. Amen. It does not yet appear. You only see through the dark, uh, through a glass darkly, praise God. We can only imagine, praise God. It does not yet what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, here, he is who? Is the Father. Praise God. Is who? Is the Father. Shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. 
we shall be like him because we shall bear his image. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a privilege. What kind of love is this? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. That takes us from all the way from being enemies of God to becoming his sons and daughters who bear his image, who have his nature, praise God. Hallelujah. Who are appointed heirs of all his possession, praise God. What manner of love. This is the hope. Next verse he says, And every man that had this hope in him purified himself even as he is pure. And I want to finish with this verse. Praise God. Let us stand. David foreseeing this, he said this in Psalms 17 verse, read verse 14. Psalms, I believe it's Psalms. Hallelujah. Psalms 17, the next verse, 15. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Do you understand that? I shall see your face in righteousness. Who's God's righteousness? Christ. And I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Who's God's likeness? Christ. Hallelujah. When I awake, hallelujah. When I am raised, hallelujah, in your likeness. I shall be satisfied. That is my satisfaction. Praise God. Oh, I can only imagine what it will be like. Praise God. To arise, hallelujah. To be raised up in the image of God. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that? See, this is why Satan hates us. Amen. This is the price, brothers and sisters. This is the price that God has called you to obtain. All the struggle in your life, amen? All the trial of the enemy in your life is to prevent you from obtaining this. Praise God. It's to, ob uh, amen? Amen? But remember, be like Paul. For I am convinced, praise God, amen, that the suffering of the present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. It can't be compared to what you're going to obtain. Hallelujah, Jesus. Shall we just thank the Lord right now? If you really truly understand that, praise God. You know, it's not by God chose us from the beginning. Amen. We didn't choose him. Praise God. He chose us to obtain this glory, to bear his image. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To be heirs of all things through his son. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is the divine glory. Hallelujah. He called us to bear the e the the the. the the brightness of his glory, hallelujah. To bear the image of his persons, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we cannot fathom, we cannot comprehend, Lord Jesus. Lord, right now, what we're going to be like, but we know that when you appear, Lord, we're going to be just like you, hallelujah. We're going to be glorious just like you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we are not worthy of this great privilege and calling that you have called us with through your gospel. 
But Lord, help us to be mindful of this, Lord Jesus. Every day of our life, Lord Jesus. That this is our hope. This is our hope. Our hope that one day we will bear your image, Lord Jesus. We will look like you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And we will see your face. In righteousness, we will see your face, Lord Jesus. We shall behold you. We shall handle you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Enlighten our soul. Enlighten our soul to see. To see the hope of your calling. To see the hope of your calling. Enlighten our eyes to see the hope of your calling. And the riches of the inheritance in the saints in light. Enlighten our soul, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, let us not sell what we have. Amen. Or something that is meaningless. The Bible says that Esau sold his birthright for a morsel of bread. Amen. There's nothing that this world can offer us that can be comparable to what we have been called to obtain in Christ Jesus. Praise God. There's nothing. I mean, think about it. What can this world offer you? Amen. In comparison, it's a morsel of bread. Paul said, I have counted the loss of all things and count them as done that I may win Christ. What does he mean by win Christ? Obtain this glory, his image. Hallelujah. All of the things that he has lost is done. Everybody say done. That means rubbish. Rubbish. Hallelujah. Amen. Why can't the devil jungle before us? It's rubbish. Don't be like Judas selling your birthright, your calling for 30 pieces of silver. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The only way that you can inherit the kingdom of God, the only way you're going to make it into heaven is to be born of Christ. And the only way you are going to be born of Christ is to be baptized in Jesus' name. Only those who have borne the image of the heavenly man will make it to heaven. Hallelujah. Only those who have borne the image of the heavenly man. If anyone tells you otherwise, they are deceiving you. Bear the image of the heavenly man. Put on Christ. Hallelujah. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And you will become a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.